Next, um, we have uh, Andy Fassim Power. I hope I said that right. I asked you. <laughs> uh, she describes herself as an eclectic visual artist whose primary medium is pottery. She's recently begun to explore public storytelling as a way to encourage her 12-year-old daughter to confront her anxieties. Since Andy's primary goal for much of her life has been to disappear, this is art harder than it looks. So, here's Andy. Trying to find my notes. It's probably safe to say that there are as many reasons to keep a personal journal as there are people out there keeping them. I think that most of us are introduced to the journal keeping process sometime in either elementary school or, element or middle school. I know that's where I was introduced to the idea. It's also where I learned that you could fail at keeping a journal, that there are rules and ways that it was supposed to be done. And I failed a lot. Again and again, I would embark on a new journal project, only to abandon the new journal soon afterwards. Somehow, no matter what I did, I just never seemed to follow through. I'm a very tactile person, so I kept thinking that if I found the right book, it would help. And so I looked at different sizes and different bindings and different papers, only to discover that it wasn't the book, it was me. I was doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. I learned a lot about my process when I decided to actually look through a bunch of my old journals, and it turns out that the journals are really kind of a minefield. You can tell a lot about people by how they approach a minefield. Um, my approach is to put up big fences and really big signs that say minefield, keep the hell out. So my journal is filled with different things that represent personal minefields for me. I challenge anyone to look at their family of origin and not see a minefield there somewhere. In the case of my sister, which this spread is about, our minefields had to do, our biggest conflicts had to do with the different ways we approached the minefield. Having already explained my method, hers was to just pretend that the minefield didn't exist, so she would tap dance all over it. In spite of the assertions of Oscar Wilde, I have never kept a journal so that I would have something sensational to read. As a result, Text is not an important part of my journals, and I spend a lot of time finding different ways to obscure it. Self-image is a large part of my personal battlefield, um, and it's something I come back to again and again and again and again and again and again. Um, I've never met a woman who actually likes everything about herself. In response to delving deep into my minefields, it's kind of nice to have something that is encouraging and positive. And this was the result of a Facebook thing where you basically invite the people you know to, to post in your comments some sort of brief description of you. And the descriptions were all so kind that I decided I needed to have them to reference. And while I don't like reading my own words in my journals, I do find it very inspiring to read the words of others. In those rare cases where there are words that I think I might like to refer back to, I put pockets in the journals and I make little books. In this case, the pockets are made by folding the pages over and then gluing in very industrial feeling metal zippers. The zippers remind me of industry, of factories, and of the work that women did traditionally in those factories, which is also what the bees represent for me. Religion is another of the huge minefields in pretty much everyone's life. Um, as a woman, I never really felt like there was a place for me in traditional religion. Um, it seemed as though they thought I had nothing to contribute. On the other hand, as a woman, the other area where I felt very unvalued was my sexuality. It always seemed as though the people most interested in me valued me the least. I'm lost. <laughs> so this is an example of, of one of my pages 
this page sat untouched for several years and has changed dramatically since the Women's March on Washington. Um, there is a lot of text there that explores specifically the subject of marital rape. This page is related to my parasomnias. I have nightmares, night terrors, I talk in my sleep, I sing in my sleep. Um, sleep paralysis, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. The good news is that those small hours between, you know, when I'm supposed to be sleeping and the rising of the sun give me a lot of opportunities to work in the book. A um, lot of time spent contemplating my own death and the death of others. Like anyone who has studied the Tarot, I have a somewhat more favorable relationship with death. This spread is actually an example of one of the ways that I use the journal to document specific experiences. This is actually a completely straightforward account of a guided meditation I participated in. Um, and then this is the process page where I was working on a panel that I was invited to do for a traveling exhibit on the signs of suicide. I wanted to experiment with color palette and I'd never used the type of paint that we were using, so this seemed as good a place as any. Um, my journal is actually a War Department Finance Department of the U.S. Army 1944 journal, uh, cash book that I keep and it has inspired me to actually um, keep other journals. This one, this page is from a book that I call The Moon Book. And then these are some photos of other things, including the cover of the book. I leave you with two pieces of advice. Um, the first is that Gesso is a creative get out of jail free card. <laughs> and the second is if at first you don't succeed, redefine success. Thank you, Wendy. Um, she's a beautiful storyteller. I've heard her quite a few times, and every time I'm just impressed by just um, her storytelling and the way she just shares her, uh, her art. So thank you.